How do you get the paper? It's uh, I think it's the, the direction. Um, the uh, let's see, I'm not sure which one it is. No. That's just so maybe the one that's uh, direct to the area downward. Yeah, I think that one. I don't know. I'm gonna have to switch it back in the in the summer and see.
about white people as the protagonist, and then the next category was like animals and trucks, and then the next category was like African American and Asian Americans, and like Native Americans was less than 1% of books. And most of the books, until recently written by Native people, or written about Native peoples, were not written by Native people. So um, it was a, actually a really great author talk. But I've heard it's really good. Like I said, I'm not very far into it, but everybody who's read it said it's great. So if you want to join us, or if you have friends who like to read, have them join us. It's not a church book per se, although I think it speaks to some of our social justice issues we talk about in the church. Um, I believe that's everything. Is there anything I'm missing for opportunities for ministry? If not, then let's open our worship with our opening hymn, I Come With Joy, number 617 in the hymnal. <laughs>
So continued prayers for Kate and Mike's friend Jim, and he's doing better the last we knew, know, and so we pray that that continues and that God is at work healing them. Lord, in your mercy. In what other prayers and praises are on your hearts? I, I also would just like to have a prayer said for Gary. So prayers for Gary, prayers of healing for Gary. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. What other prayers are in your hearts? Good for um, Pastor Joyer's family. So prayers for um, Pastor Jerry Troyer's family, who um, he died this week. Was it, I was going to say Friday, but um, our clergy group was getting updates. But yeah, prayers for him and his family as he died pretty unexpectedly. He fell ill and then just didn't come out of it. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Are there any other prayers or praises? If not, let's go to God in silent prayer, knowing that God knows all that's on our hearts and in our minds. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we lift up to you the prayers of our hearts, and God, we lift up you the prayers of all your people around the world who are gathering today to celebrate this foretaste of heaven, this time of communing with Christ at the table. Lord, we lift up to you those people who we have named those people who are hoping for healing and praying for healing, God, we pray miracles for them. And God, we pray your healing on those grieving human hearts. We pray that the memories of their loved one might bring them comfort in their grief and they might feel your loving presence among them. And Lord, we pray for our world as we celebrate together with Christians around the world as the body of Christ that encompasses every country and every nation and every color and every language, God, we pray that you might be at work in and through every person who calls you Father. Lord, we pray your love might work in and through us that we might be your messengers on earth, sharing the good news of your love with everyone we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's join together. Well, before we do that, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join together in our hymn, number 641, Fill My Cup, Lord.
lesson this morning is from Matthew 26, verses 26 through 30. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be measured and found pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So last week, we traveled with Jesus and his disciples to the northernmost point in their journeys, to Caesarea Philippi. And Jesus had announced his disciples that he would be put to death in Jerusalem. And that was kind of a hinge point in the story. And from there on, Jesus was preparing himself and the disciples for his death. On the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter and James and John glimpsed Jesus' glory, but they would not truly comprehend it until after Jesus' death and resurrection. Jesus' arrest and trial and crucifixion still lay ahead before the things happen that we celebrate today on World Communion Sunday. And now I know a lot of you have really liked the sermons about Simon Peter the past few Sundays, but I'm afraid the trend is going to end at least temporarily for today, and we'll go back to talking about Simon Peter next week. But next week, we're going to actually look at the same story, Monday, Thursday, that we're looking at today, but we're going to look at it through the eyes of Simon Peter. But today, we're going to talk about World Communion Sunday. Now, World Communion Sunday began as a worldwide Communion Sunday at Shadyside Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1933. Reverend Hugh Thompson Kerr and his congregation sought to demonstrate the interconnectedness of Christian churches regardless of denomination. So we have been gathering together as the body, worldwide body of Christ on World Communion Sunday for 90 years today. And today we celebrate World Communion Sunday with congregations all over the globe. Followers of Jesus Christ in large cities and small towns, on farms and in cities and in ornate buildings and under tents. And we all gather to receive the bread and cup of Holy Communion. Now, despite our differences in our denominations and our traditions, we celebrate our unity in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now, there are lots of ways we refer to receiving communion. We call it the Lord's Supper, we celebrate communion, we call it the Eucharist, although it seems like we hear that more from our Catholic and Episcopalian brothers and sisters. Um, I often refer to communion as the great thanksgiving or the Lord's table. And we're all invited to come to the Lord's table to nourish our souls upon these holy gifts of Christ. His body given for us is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. His blood poured out for us to cleanse us from sin and to seal us to a new covenant of grace. Our coming to the Lord's table is a means by which we gather in obedience to the instruction of Christ, to do this in remembrance of me. So Jesus is going to be coming again for his church, and communion reminds us and fills us with that hope. It helps us remain focused on the redemption that is ours now by grace, and upon the ultimate redemption that is yet to come when he gathers us home to live in his eternal presence. So this isn't just a ritual, this is obedience, this is spiritual practice. It's a life-sustaining spiritual nourishment for our souls. Now I uh, put up on the sign at Alden, um, 
uh, it says on it, which I don't know if they always know what I'm going to put up there and are a little puzzled sometimes, but this time I put up, the trees are about to show how lovely it is to let things go. I saw that somewhere and I thought that was a great thing. And um, the scripture I put with it is Ecclesiastes 3. Does anybody know what Ecclesiastes 3 is? Well, the birds made it into a really popular song that says, to everything, turn, 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 there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. And I think the leaves are showing us that time of letting things go and that it can be beautiful. And I feel that today and every time we come together to Christ's table for Holy Communion, we are to lay some things down and leave some things at the table with Jesus. And in their place, we are to take away with us his all-sufficient grace and his provision and his peace. And in this season of World Communion Sunday, God's creation and the beauty of the fall color and the leaves that's just starting everywhere claims this to the world. So I want you to close your eyes for a minute, and it might be a little bit more than a minute, and I want you to picture in your mind Christ's table. And maybe the words of the psalmist David will help you to picture the table. The Lord is my shepherd, but I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We've been invited to the Lord's table. Can you see it? He's made the provision for us, green pastures, still waters, cups filled to overflowing, oil for our heads, restoration for our souls, the safety and protection that comes from his watchful presence and his rod and his staff. And notice where the table is, though. It's in the presence of our enemies. And if this table represents God's grace and God's forgiveness and God's provision and mercy and healing, God's presence, God's peace, God's spiritual nourishment and sustenance, then what an odd place for it in the presence of our enemies. But let's think about enemies broadly as the people and the things and the stresses and the feelings and emotions and obstacles and challenges that distract us and try to defeat us, that weary us and prevent us from being who God wants us to be, from being where God wants us to be, and from receiving all God wants us to receive. So here is the picture. The table of the Lord spread with every good gift of the Father, God's saving grace, God's enabling grace that will strengthen us and see us through every possible circumstance we might face. It's here prepared for us smack dab in the presence of all that we struggle with and battle with. Christ has prepared his table in the presence of all the distractions, all the weariness you've experienced, all the attacks of the enemy, the accusations, the doubts, the questions, the hesitations, Christ prepared his table for you in the presence of all the fears and worries, the fears and frustrations. Christ has prepared this table for you in the presence of hostile opinions and ideologies. Christ has prepared this table for you in the presence of physical fatigue and illness, in the presence of the COVID fog that keeps blurring your vision and limits your sense of smell and taste. Christ has prepared this table before you in the presence of emotional wounds that keep bleeding, in the presence of the diagnosis and prognosis you never wanted to receive. Christ has prepared a table before you, and do you hear what I'm telling you? In the presence of all that works against us, you are invited to come to the table and find God's life-sustaining, life-giving grace and peace 
given through Jesus Christ. You can open your eyes now. In the United Methodist Church, we remember Jesus' last supper with his disciples where he took the bread that represents Jesus' body and the cup filled with wine that represents Jesus' blood and told his disciples to do what he did that night to remember him and what he did. Jesus was interpreting something old in the Passover supper and its remembrance of human slavery and introducing something new in our deliverance from the bondage of sin, brokenness, and death. We consider Holy Communion a sacrament, which means that we believe that it is an outward sign of an inward grace. In the United Methodist Church, Holy Communion is served at Christ's table, and Christ invites everyone into relationship with him. And we have an open table, which means that everyone's welcome to share in Holy Communion. And that includes children, because Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Holy Communion is a wonderful mystery, and children understand wonder and mystery. It also includes sinners because Jesus ate with sinners then, 2,000 years ago, and he still eats with sinners today. Holy Communion provides us with an opportunity to examine ourselves in the light of God's love. We have confession and pardon as part of Holy Communion so that we might repent and confess our sin to God and have assurance of God's blessing and pardon. In the United Methodist Church, we use bread and grape juice, which is unfermented or new wine, so that Christ's table is welcoming to those who struggle with alcohol and children. There are so many faithful Christians who don't partake of Holy Communion because of a mistake understanding that they are unworthy to take communion based on 1 Corinthians 11. John Wesley addressed this problem in his sermon, The Duty of Constant Communion, when he said, God offers you one of the greatest mercies on this side of heaven and commands you to accept it. You are unworthy to receive any mercy from God. But is that a reason for refusing all mercy? Why do you not obey God's command? What? Unworthy to obey God? And then John Wesley went on to explain that unworthiness doesn't apply to the people who are going to share in communion, but to the manner in which the consecrated bread and wine are consumed. We may not feel it worthy to share in Holy Communion, but ultimately it's not about us. It's not about our goodness or lack of goodness. It's ultimately about God's goodness. This is how much God loved the world, that God gave God's one and only Son. And as sacraments, which are means of God's grace, communion is to be seen not as a barrier, but a pathway. People who haven't yet been baptized, who respond to the invitation in our service, they're welcome to share in Holy Communion too. And we believe that just as the Holy Spirit was there with Jesus that first, last supper, that Holy Spirit is with us now as we share in Holy Communion this morning. We believe that God is with Christians across time and space, giving us a real and present memory of God's work in Jesus and in the Lord's Supper, and in us as we go out to do Christ's work in the world. I love how our book that uh, explains Holy Communion, that we have to memorize in seminary or at least parts of it, says it in this one paragraph. It says, As we encounter Christ in Holy Communion and are repeatedly touched by divine grace, we are progressively shaped into Christ's image. All of this work is not done in a moment, no matter how dramatic an experience we may enjoy. It is instead a lifelong process through which God intends to shape us into people motivated by love, empowered and impassioned to do Christ's work in the world. There is grace for you. This is who Jesus is and what he has done. Stop focusing on the enemies and focus on the relationship you have with, with God through Jesus Christ. You are heirs of God, adopted into the family. Forget the distractions, drop your worries and cares, and take a spot at the table. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.
So Jesus was always the guest. In the home of Peter and Jarius, Mary and Martha, Joanna and Susanna, he was always the guest. At the meals of the wealthy where he pled the case of the poor, he was always the guest. Upsetting polite company, befriending isolated people, welcoming the stranger, he was always the guest. But here, at this table, Jesus is the host. And those who wish to serve him must first be served by him. Those who want to follow him must first be fed by him. And those who would wash his feet must first let him make them clean. For this is the table where God intends for us to be nourished. This is the time when Christ can make us new. So come, all of you who hunger and thirst for a deeper faith, for a fuller life, for a better world. Jesus Christ, who has sat at our tables, now invites us to be guests at his. You'll join me in the prayer of confession that is up on the screen. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. It wasn't matching. What are you saying it wasn't matching? Yeah. There we go. We oh. have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news that even when we and the world are falling apart, God's redeeming love can make us whole once more. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We thank and praise you, loving Creator, who sang the world into being in all its amazing diversity. In the story of Eden, we see your vision for harmony, for the unity of humankind with all creation, laughing and loving under the tree of life. Yet out of our desire to know more, to judge good from evil, to be like you, we rebelled against your guidance and cut ourselves off from you, from the land, and from each other, and even from our deepest, truest selves. We strayed from your abundance into a path of scarcity where our lives have been marked by violence and fear, greed and envy, prejudice and domination. But throughout the ages, you have sent prophets and messengers to proclaim your vision of justice and right relationship, and to point the way back to your unfailing, unconditional love. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is Jesus Christ our Savior, born to poor parents under scandalous circumstances in an occupied backwater territory of the Roman Empire. He called as followers a diverse group of ordinary people and taught them to love neighbor and enemy alike. Without regard to background or station, he healed the sick and fed the hungry. He spoke truth to power, cast out the forces that kept many on the margins, welcomed children, affirmed women, and overcame his own cultural biases to embrace a wider vision of God's dream for humanity. Though he knew himself to be your beloved child, he did not seek to be lifted up or recognized as greater than others, but practiced obedience to your ways, even when it led to his arrest, trial, torture, and death. On the night in which he gave himself up for love's sake, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, and said, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. 
As one loaf becomes many pieces to be taken into your bodies, so you, wherever you may be scattered, are still united in my love. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, a promise of grace and the forgiveness of sins, both yours and the sins of those who call strangers and enemies. For you are all children of God, born into one human family, and my grace is sufficient for all. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of all the ways we see your love made flesh in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering with us, for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out the Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. May this bread give us a hunger for your justice as we stand in solidarity with the outcast and oppressed. And may the cup renew our thirst for peace as we serve others with respect and compassion. By your spirit, draw us into your heart and give us a new heart for all people that we may proclaim and create with you your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Among friends gathered around a table, Jesus took bread and he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Later, he took the cup and he said, This is the relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take it, all of you, to remember me. Christ, whom the universe could not contain, is present to us in the breaking of this bread. Christ, who has redeemed us and called us by name, now meets us in the sharing of this cup. So take this bread and this cup in this meal that God comes to us, so that we may come to God. You may come now, for all is ready. <laughs> the body of Christ given for you. Cup of salvation poured out for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. Body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. Body and blood of Christ given for you.
uniting us as the body of Christ and for filling us with joy at this table. Lead us towards the unity of your church and help us treasure signs of reconciliation. Now that we have tasted the banquet you have prepared for us, may we one day feast together in your heavenly city. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. It is time as Christ has given all that we have and all that we are to us. For us to return those gifts and ourselves to God, to be used by God to build his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all of the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Number 671, Lord dismiss us with thy blessing. Amen.